this is a poem that when if you love. Welcome, welcome all to our Riding the Phoenix podcast. This is Empress Nairobi, and I am your host today. Today's podcast, we are uh, presenting a tribute to Marcus Adams. He's a young man at the age of 25. He died in San Antonio, Texas. He was written off as a suicide. However, his family and his friends state that this was not a suicide. So there's some mystery that's involved with this particular case. And so into this podcast, we're going to go more into who Marcus Adams was and why there is such a mystery. Um, we do have a special guest on this episode. His name is Sincere Adams. He is the uncle to Marcus Adams. He's also known as Sincere the Dreamer. He's a singer, rapper, and a songwriter. And we will definitely bring him on board so that he can give us some more insight and some more information to present to the community. Welcome, Sincere. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for joining us on our podcast. And we really appreciate you taking the time out to be with us today. Um, I actually wanted to go a little bit more into this, this case that happened with your, uh, with your nephew. It's a really sad situation and we hate to hear this, um, but we wanted to shed some light and give you an opportunity to speak uh, a little bit more about uh, the case and give us some more details on, on what has taken place and what's transpired with the case. Um, I'm here to give all the information that's needed to find justice for my nephew. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I want to play a clip that um, came from one of the Ken Five News I think in the area of San Antonio Texas uh, on July 31st and uh, it looked like his passing occurred around July 24th or 25th so we're going to hear the details here and uh, we'll play it for the play it for the listeners and then we'll kind of dive right in how's that sound? That's perfect. Okay. A man's body is found in a drainage culvert on the city's west side. But what happened next involving two teenage girls is even more disturbing. Eyewitness News reporter Alyssa Day spoke with the man's family, fighting to honor his memory. With a smile like no other, family members say 25-year-old Marcus Adams was well-loved. He enjoyed being outside and staying active. Because his attitude and how he'll make fun. A kind person and the oldest of six, his mother says he kept everyone laughing. He'll, he'll do anything. And they just automatically loved him because, like I said, his attitude was just, he kept a smile on his face. On Monday, Adams' family received devastating news. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says Adams' body was found in a drainage culvert in this far west San Antonio neighborhood. The medical examiner has ruled Adams' death a suicide. But what happened after he died has the family questioning everything. It's bad enough to steal from the living, but to steal from the dead, he's helpless. Sheriff Javier Salazar says teenage girls who discovered the body recorded cell phone video of the incident and of them stealing a necklace from the body. They're, they're laughing about, I can't believe you're doing this, words to that effect, treating it as a joke. The family says what happened was insensitive and cruel, but they will fight to honor the memory of the man they love. And we just want justice for Marcus Adams because we feel, we don't feel what is being said about him. And while their grief is overwhelming, they say they are grateful to everyone who has reached out to comfort them. Marcus Adams was loved. Mm -hmm. He had a family. A large family. In the meantime, at kens5.com, you'll find a link to a fund the family has set up to help pay for funeral expenses. Alyssa Teas, Kens5 Eyewitness News. Now, the two girls accused of stealing the jewelry are 16 and 17. The 17 year old is charged with theft from a human corpse and grave. She's been released on bond. Okay, so we just heard the clip here and. Um, they started off saying that it's a suicide, but of course the family feels like it's not a suicide, as we mentioned earlier. Now there was two girls that was involved. Um, what we've seen here is there there was a a video on Snapchat where there's two young ladies who are filming themselves uh, taking some jury off of the body of your nephew. Um, 
Do you want to talk a yes. little bit about that for me? Yes. Uh, one of the girls named, uh, well, it's, like you said, it's two. One name being Bethany Martin. Martin. The other one is underage, so her name can't be disclosed. But uh, yeah, they they supposedly they came across his body, and what they told the police was they came across his body, and then not long afterwards they called the police to come. But it was found out that they actually spent time with his body. They they were with him before he died. Uh, and there's actual proof through Bethany Martin's uh, Instagram account where she's basically saying that uh, she wasn't the only one involved and they had his body in the house overnight. So they moved him to the spot where he was at just to stage them stealing the chain from his neck so that it could be posted on social media. And they said that they actually said that they staged it. They didn't say that they staged it, mm -hmm. but we know that it's staged because when you look at the videos of them actually stealing the chain from his from his neck, his body is in different positions. Right. Okay. And you can actually see that he, he's being like his body is being positioned in a way, I guess, so that way whatever they were trying to pull off with their video, they can accomplish. It just seems so odd that they would actually take the time to do that and to actually film themselves taking a necklace off of the body that would almost like put themselves into a situation where they're an accomplice or they are, you know, I, I don't understand why they would do such a thing. Um, and really if you see it, you can actually see them celebrating, like they're laughing, they're dancing, joking around. And uh, that neighborhood in San Antonio, where my nephew lived, those they they were there since the beginning of the neighborhood. My mother was the first person to buy a home in that neighborhood when it was first torn down. She was there when there was no other people there. So everyone who lived in that community knew my family. My nephews, uh, my nieces, they would walk around the neighborhood. These one, the the youngest girl lived a few houses away from them. So there was no way in the world that my nephew was a stranger to anybody in that neighborhood. But like they told the police, they came across a man that they didn't know. That's the first sign and the first clue that there's the truth is not being given because he wasn't a stranger. He was a person, even if they were too young to, to know him, they knew him by name. They knew him by, by seeing him around every day, just walking around. So these people weren't strangers. And I mean, and it also, when you view the video that they posted, you'll also notice that there's a, a, a guy, you can hear a guy's voice that's speaking. Yeah. His name is Caesar. We don't know if the city has anything to do with covering up my nephew's homicide. But it's extremely strange that the two girls whose body, who, who, who stole from my nephew, who stole from his body, they're the only two that went to jail and was bonded out. This guy is not a co-defendant of those two girls, was never questioned. Matter of fact, he still lives in the neighborhood, neighborhood where my nephew lived. Hmm. So that, that so piece of mystery. <laughs> Yeah, that that that's a huge mystery. And to unravel the, the mystery a little bit more when it comes to Caesar. Okay. Caesar is a foster brother to my nephew, Marcus Adams' best friend who committed suicide a few years back. So Caesar knew my nephew because Marcus and his foster brother, Jason, were best friends. So he would be in their house often, like every day, spending, spending the night, spending weekends, so he knew Caesar. So for Caesar to stand there and say, don't touch his body because of fingerprints, that's showing no remorse to a person who was supposed to be a friend, a best friend 
of your brother, foster brother, who's, who killed himself. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, there's a whole theory to that because uh, after my nephew's body was found, we later went the next day to the site where he was found and we actually found where someone had written Suicide Squad right above where his body was posed. Mm. And so, you know, that right there is like, to me is a huge question, even when it comes to uh, Caesar's brother, Jason, who they say committed suicide. So let me ask you, I'm a little confused because now we have three people who made it on the video, made it seem like they didn't really know this person and they were just randomly stealing a necklace from somebody they didn't know. And as you're revealing, it's somebody they've known for a long time. And they didn't yeah. seem very, uh, it's, it was for me, if I was to see a dead body, I would literally be like freaking out and ready to call like 911 and oh my god and I would be crying and it, you know that's just me but maybe maybe not everybody feels that way <laughs> you know maybe not everybody responds that way so it just seems a little odd that they respond the way that they do I'm I'm gonna say it like this sister it's it would be odd for a person who has something wrong with them mentally so where they they don't have any remorse or any sympathy for another person. Yeah. But with these girls and with the boy who was recording the video, it's more than that because you would have that, like you said, for a complete stranger to 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 to, to actually probably panic or cry, uh, 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 definitely call the police mm -hmm. as soon as you see it. Right and not make any videos. But what this was, was people who were doing it to somebody who they knew, especially Caesar, knowing my nephew in a much more personal way than a younger two females. Can we talk Because my nephew was 25. I'm, yes. I'm curious uh, Caesar, about Caesar. Yeah. Yes, see Caesar, uh, and what makes this to add insult to injury, we believe my nephew was killed Sunday, like around between five and six. Caesar actually came by my, 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 uh, my nephew, my, my parents, because my nephew stayed with my, my mother, his grandmother. Caesar actually came around by my nephew's house around six o'clock Sunday and tried to get my other two nephews to leave off to go with him asking them if they wanted to smoke weed. Hmm. You know, my nephew explained to me that, that Caesar and another guy uh, pulled up to his house, to their house. And when they told him no, they drove off. My nephew explained that it's being a white car, something like a whitest colored car. You know what I mean? And that was the same day that my nephew that they're saying that he was actually killed so wait, around the up, same they, time. They pulled up to his house, asked him to come smoke some weed. He says no. See, the, both my nephews said no because they were saying that it was, it was, they thought that something was up with it because it was before they knew anything had happened to, to their brother. They didn't know. We hadn't found out yet. They hadn't found out yet. Oh, this is uh, his brothers. Okay, your other nephews, they're, they're his brothers. Yes, his, his brothers, his younger brothers, Lavelle and Jonathan. Okay. Interesting. See, they, we hadn't found out. We didn't find out until Monday morning that my nephew was, de was dead. But Sunday around 6 o'clock, they say, Caesar and another guy drove to the house tried to get them off, go uh, walk off or drive off and go smoke some weed. See, at first I was thinking that they were going to try to do my two nephews something, my other two nephews something. But then after, well, after the fact, many, many, many days, like almost two, two weeks later, I realized, I started to realize it wasn't, they wasn't in any immediate danger at that moment. What it was, was those boys were going to try to use my two other two nephews as an alibi by, I guess, casually 
smoking weed and walking into the area where they knew that their brother was, my nephew Marcus. And so that way they would have found their brother along with them and the police would have been called from there with them being what my other two nephews as the alibi. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay. So the story unfolds. Um, so they didn't go. So they, that changes the plan a little bit maybe. Uh, and they had to somehow come up with some way to cover it up and turn it into a suicide. Yeah. That, that makes sense. So uh, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your cousin committed suicide? I mean, your nephew committed suicide. No, he, he, he didn't commit suicide because they say he died by hanging himself. The autopsy report indicated that he had no broken bones in his neck, which is impossible to hang yourself. Uh, if you hang yourself and you break you, well, uh, once you hang yourself, you know you're breaking your neck. And that's basically how your, your life, you, you suffocate to death. He had nothing wrong with his, his Adam's apple, nothing wrong with, with, with his, his airways, with, with his neck, no broken bones. And when you actually look at the video, you would see that when he's hanging and they're stealing the neck, the necklace from his neck, he's not, he has nothing wrapped around his neck. What he's hanging by is his do-rag. His do-rag was tied around his head so tight that at the, 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 the coroner, uh, at we, he had a knot on his head, an extremely huge knot on his head which means that they probably had to do that when he was still alive for his body to, 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 to produce swelling, which, you know, doesn't happen post-mortem. Mm. So there was a huge knot on his head and the actual string part that you tie the do-rag, it was tied around a pole. So he was hanging from his head, not his neck. Mm. There's no way you can commit suicide by hanging by your head and he was on his knees. He was on his knees hanging from his head. There's no possible way he could have died that way. Right. Not to mention his left nipple was cut off. Yeah, his shoulder was set on fire. Wow. Yeah, his, his, his nipple, none of those things ever came out in the autopsy report, mind you. Which also makes us think that you know, I, I, I really, I know for a fact that I'm an intelligent man. So what it seems to me is that somebody is connected. I don't know if they're connected through the police, through the judicial system, uh, through, through, the, through some type of cartel uh, or whatever the situation might be. But there has to be a reason why Caesar's name isn't mentioned. He's the only person that's not mentioned. So is Caesar, but, would he have been an enemy? Um, did they become enemies at some point? Caesar and my nephew had never became enemies. Because my nephew trusted Caesar. Did Marcus have any? Now, my nephew was into it with two guys, okay. one named Rash Rashad and the other one named Justin. My nephew had gotten into fist fights with both guys. It was alleged, well, it was not alleged, it was it's a fact that my nephew had spoken to his brother the, the day before, that Saturday and even Earlier that Sunday, he was on the phone with, with another guy. I, I forgot his name because I just found out what his name was not too long ago. But they were in a huge argument behind Justin. Something was said, and my nephew was extremely upset. <laughs> when this so happened, my nephew dies, and Justin stays two houses across from where they found his body, meaning that you have to pass Justin's house to get to where my nephew was 
where his body was found, which is only maybe 50 yards away. So we know that his body, I, we know that he was killed somewhere else. Because then to like the videotape itself, the recording that they made is damning in a lot of ways, but beneficial for, for my nephew when it comes to justice. Because if you analyze that video, what you would see is that there is no blood, which is impossible for you to see a, a, a incision in his, in his chest where his nipple is cut off. And the signs of his arm being burned, but there's no fire that was set and there's nothing that's burned in that area. There's no blood, which I don't know where these detectives went to school at, but it seems like San Antonio does a piss poor job when it comes to training their detectives or maybe it has nothing to do with the training of the detectives and more of the corruption of them trying to sweep this under the table. Another black boy then committed suicide, which is a theme when it comes to San Antonio of young black men committing suicide. But this time with my nephew, Marcus Jamal Adams, they, 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 they didn't count on him having a family that was going to pull all the punches to see to it that he get justice. And, and, and that's what we're all here for. Right. That's what my new purpose has shifted to be. Right. Wow. Can you tell us a little bit about your nephew, um, Marcus Adams' character? Marcus Jamal Adams, you, uh, I, I would say this about my nephew. You know how a lot of people that are blessed with certain type of spiritual abilities to be, some people can just uh, sense certain things. My nephew had the ability to pick up on, he didn't even have to really know you, but if you were around him and something was going on in your life, it's like he can without knowing what it is, he, can he was able to tell that something was wrong. And even if something was going on in his life to where it was stopping him from smiling, he would automatically kick in to try to, into making you laugh. And he, it. He, he, he was extremely comical. Like there's all types of videos uh, of him when he was in high school, in front of class, he was just like Michael Jackson. I think it was for Halloween. He was in front of class just like Michael Jackson doing the moonwalk. And, like, that was just his character. He enjoyed making people laugh. And through that, I think when he was down, he also lifted himself up through the laughter of other people. He wasn't the type of a, 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 a man that would do to someone what was done to him. You know what I mean? And... and, and Besides him being gone and his presence being missed, one of the other blows that's hard for us to deal with his family is that the world won't ever remember or they don't know him for the laughter he gave for his smile. They know him from being that dead man whose chain was stolen from his neck, who committed suicide, which I know has to be it has to be misery even when you have no life, your soul, just to know that the people who you love can be thinking that you committed suicide when it's a cover up and justice has to be served. We know that he, he was a week away from going to Colorado where he was, uh, had just, had just, became, uh, I guess, a part. He just got enrolled into a school to get a CDL license to drive trucks. And he was going to be leaving. He was supposed to be leaving to Colorado a week before he passed away. But, you know, he had been smoking marijuana because uh, that's all he did. He, he, he smoked marijuana, but he stopped. But he wanted to give it another week to leave his system so that way he could go to Colorado and not get kicked out and have this, his life interrupted. So that week, time that he gave, him, gave, he gave himself was all the time it was needed for the devil to, through his enemies to claim his life. Mm. 
he almost okay. made it out of it. So the so the enemies. Let's talk more about that real quick. Um, why exactly would these characters that were mentioned um, murder him? Why do you think that that took place? I don't know if. See, I don't know if. Because you see, nowadays, lots of people do different types of drugs, like Xanax pills and all different types of stuff that young people do, especially to understand uh, San Antonio. It's, it's a place where it's, it's a huge city with really nothing to do. And so the, the, the young people out there, it, it, it's, it's like a known fact that if you're not a positive person, you're going to probably be doing all types of drugs because that's what's there to do in the absence of having fun, clean fun. So I don't know if it was a situation to where his enemies could have been on something. And he, my nephew fought back. I mean, uh, my, my niece, Lauren, she, she's on a YouTube video where she's stating that you, if you look at his fists, his fists were black. He was, fight, he was fighting for his life. This is my cousin Marcus Adams. I'm pretty sure y'all have seen him everywhere. The girl, Bethany Martin, who stole his jewelry, he did not kill himself. Stop, everybody need to stop saying this. Stop spreading them rumors. He did not kill himself. The detective already did his autopsy and they said it ain't no suicide. They need to take another autopsy. Marcus Adams was only 25 years old. If you seen in the video, his hands were black. They were black to where he was fighting back for his life. His hand was, they had a sore on his hand. His body was burned. They tortured his body. They cut his nipple off. What I believe is that his enemies were, could have been fueled off the fact of past altercations along with, with the, also with having camaraderie and being with each other, which always stokes the fire. Also combined with drugs being involved is, is the recipe for people who call themselves the suicide squad to to commit a homicide and cover try to cover it up as a, a suicide but this time they didn't this time they were extremely dumb because they they released video of him hanging from his his head and not his neck mm -hmm. on his knees Right. I think a third grader will be able to look at that with as intelligent as our children are nowadays and tell that that was no suicide. What person commits suicide by cutting a nipple off and setting their arm on fire? That's not what people do when they commit suicide. It's not about doing that to yourself. It's about ending your life because you can't take whatever you're going through and doing it without, with the least amount of pain you, you can cause. No one cuts their nipple off and hang from their head until they're lifeless. Come on. Right. I don't know where they do that at, but that's not in the, the existence of the world we live in. Maybe on television. And that's not realistic. That would be a fictional movie. Does uh, Caesar have a connection to someone in the police force? We don't know. Because you see, this is the timeline of what happened from the beginning of uh, my brother and my sister-in-law finding out, Marcus' uh, father, Marcus Sr., finding out that, uh, that his son was dead. The police knocked on the door. He said uh, they, were, they, 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 they work from home. So they didn't answer the door, I guess, fast enough. So when they finally answered the door, the, the police kind of had like an attitude with them for taking a long time. And then after they, they, they talked to him about taking so long, they casually just told him, uh, do you know Marcus Adams? They said, yes. And they said, well, he's deceased. No sympathy, no compassion. Then they automatically said that it was a suicide. That was the second, the third thing they said, that it was a suicide, which is not how an investigation goes. 
the police never rule. Even when something is a clear suicide, they investigate it first. But to walk up on his body with him being, with him hanging from his head and call it a suicide, an hour after they discovered his, I have a long after they discovered his body before they went to inform his family, they already said it was a suicide. It was no, 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 it, it was no them trying to get to the bottom of it. Then the second story, they said that the first story was, was uh, a bunch of, a group of kids was walking through this wooded area uh, around where his body was and they found him hanging from a tree. Then the next day it changed to he wasn't in a tree. He was actually on his knees and he was tied to a fence. And he was inside, he was inside like this, the sore. He was inside the sore. And then finally, the video was released. With the first video from the girl, Bethany Martin, was released on TikTok uh, with them sitting on a couch uh, and the caption read, the day after you find a dead body. And then a second video went into the girl, Bethany Martin, saying, I put this shoulder up that shoulder up and then I drop them. I don't care. I don't care. And then the third video was of the guy Rashad, who my nephew had gotten into an altercation with and the youngest girl dancing almost like a celebration. Like they was doing a tango or whatever they were doing. It was kind of like a celebration of what was done. So, Three different times we had to find out that we were lied to because, okay, the first time they said it was through, it was kids. The second time it was older people who found them. So I, it has to be the police force has something to do with it because from the very beginning of them Coming to my family, they came there saying that it was a suicide before it was investigated. Yeah, that does sound very and odd. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all you have to do is have a, 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 a have YouTube and watch copy, watch TV shows like Forensic Files and and Law and Order, and you 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 clearly know just from watching television that that's not how an investigation goes. Mm-hmm. Even at, even if they believe that it's a suicide, all the signs point to suicide. There is still an investigation that takes days before it's ruled a suicide. Right. Take time they to don't rule it a suicide <laughs> at the scene. Right. And yeah, that, they didn't investigate anything. Caesar has never... See, they talked to Caesar. Caesar told them that he did not know my nephew at all. My brother spoke to the investigators afterwards, after the fact, and said that Caesar is lying because Caesar came to our house Sunday. He came two times. First time he came with a guy in a car, and the second time he came around on a scooter, or on a scooter he came around. And what was ironic, they have a picture, actual, one of them took a picture of Caesar there on his scooter the second time he came. Hmm. One of my nephews took a picture of him. Didn't know, really know, realize it, but they snapped the picture. Mm. And you can see him there a second time on the 25th with the scooter. When he was leaving, my brother and my, my, next, my brother's next door neighbor indicated that he seemed kind of nervous, uh, antsy. He fell off the scooter. So my brother and his neighbor, which is his best friend, they approached Caesar and they asked him if he was all right. He said he was okay. They looked at his pants and they seen something on his pants. I don't know if they thought it was blood or whatever they thought it was. They asked him if he was all right. He was like, no, that's nothing. That's just bird shit. That was his exact words, which was the exact same thing my nephew had on his pants when his body was found 
exact same thing. Mm. And you would think that they would be able to tie all this evidence together. I mean, you're able to tie it together and you're not a detective, but okay. So this is obviously a cover up, it sounds. Yes, yes. it's a cover up. So let me ask you this your family, I um, uh, saw that uh, your niece. She had a video that stated that they were going to do um, a, have a second autopsy done, and um, yes. she stated that the family would be seeking an attorney. So I don't want to get any details yes. in, into the case or you know uh, uh, impact the case in any kind of way. But I just wanted to ask you, you know, if there's any more information you have on that um, that you could share with the community. Yes, uh, we had the second autopsy. We had the we, we, we the GoFundMe, my we, you know we had a GoFundMe account uh, that was put up for my nephew to help for that, and uh, so we were able to get the second autopsy. What we were seeking was to try to get somebody outside of San Antonio, you know, uh, and so the person that we got, if I believe, uh, she was she came from Houston. But she could not do a conclusive autopsy report because his Adam's apple was missing. Mm. And, you know, so I don't understand. My nephew had only been deceased for all of, not even a, probably a week. Where would his Adam's apple go? I don't understand. I don't know if all this, if everything else with his body is present and is inside bags inside his body. Why would anything be missing, especially something missing that's in the area that basically contradicts what they're saying? Because right. Adam's apple would be proof if there was damage to his Adam's apple that he actually hang himself. And someone would have to have so access to So without the Adam's apple, apple, yeah. Oh. You see, okay. but without that, without that, they That's don't have, they, they can't rule against suicide. So right. they have to keep it the same way. Ooh, okay, interesting. Yeah, the, the plot thickens. So, and, and this becomes a stale, so they can't do anything. They can't go any further. It, it becomes a cold case file. Oh. Wow. It becomes okay. a cold case file that ends up nothing ever happening. Wow. But when it comes to the attorney, uh, the the album that I'm I'm I've released is a tribute to my nephew uh, for his birthday, which just passed yesterday, October thirteenth. He would have uh, been twenty six. Uh, I'm hoping that this does multiple things for for my nephew. Uh, I'm praying that the Most High, y'all see that it brings justice. I'm praying that it gets the message across that I'm I'm actually trying to paint with all of the information that we've gathered. And I hope that it reverses what people think about my nephew, because there's millions of people who viewed his body. Some people were saying, like to, to the girls, how could they do this? And some people were laughing and saying he didn't need the necklace anyway. You know, so hopefully this can turn to something to where my nephew becomes honored and known for who he truly was. And he had a beautiful heart and an exquisite soul. I say that for the rest of my life. When when I left my when I lost my nephew, along with the rest of my family, I honestly can say I understand how it feels to kind of die yourself. I feel like what was done to him was done to me. Wow. My yes. condolences to you. It can never be the same. Sure. Thank you. So Thank I you. wanted to ask you, do you feel that justice has been served to the young girls who um, stole the necklace? No. Hmm. Okay. no, no. My nephew, again, was a black man. 
I know when it comes to a jury of 12 peers, the 12 peers that's always there are never peers that's peers of ours who can understand our story, our plight, and our struggle. That's right. So when they look in the eyes of these teenagers, and one being so young, uh, she would be in juvenile court. I don't know if she's 12 or 13 or however old she is. They're going to look into these little girls' faces and they're going to see angels mm. whose life doesn't need to end behind a man who committed suicide, they say. But the truth is, in their eyes, there's eyes of fallen angels who bragged about the murder of my nephew, who tried to get royalties from social media, benefiting, capitalizing off the death of my nephew. If they can walk away with no time served, then we know we're living in a world to where, and we know this already, we're living in a world to where the hue of your skin is a determining factor of whether or not you can find justice because justice hides itself from us. Right. And that's our struggle that we all face. And so I'm hoping that that common bond we have bring, bring us together for my nephew because he deserves he deserved to have retribution for what was done to him. Absolutely. Brother, tell me a little bit about your music that you put together um, for your nephew. What song? What I put together have? is basically, um, it's news clips and it's things like that that I've put in basically to broadcast the name of Bethany Martin and also to bring awareness. The first piece that's actually done, that's going to start it as an intro. It's a spoken word piece uh, entitled Somewhere Tonight. It was my nephew's favorite poem that I wrote that uh, I was asked to recite at his funeral. And I recited it, but this time it, I did it differently uh, by adding a guy at the studio named Andrew who plays guitar. So he played it live to my spoken word. And that's uh, that would be the first song, which is a spoken word piece on his tribute LP album. Okay, somewhere tonight, somewhere tonight. All right, yes. I'm play that. Okay. This is a poem that my nephew loved. He would ask me to recite it to him often. So I recite it to him now, like I did at his funeral. But this time. Twist on it. It's gonna be me, Andrew. Show me what it is, Andrew. This is entitled Somewhere Tonight. Somewhere Tonight, that's a child breathing his last breath. He's choking on his blood while praying to God before his death. His words are innocent and bold, like somehow. That prayer will save his soul. That's a story to everyone's life that needs to be told. So please listen to my words as the truth unfolds. Does he above listen to the prayers of the unjust? And when we die, is our souls lie to rest? You see, I believe he's in every hood, trailer park, and slum from coast to coast. Cause it's us, his people lost in the dark that needs him the most. Somewhere tonight, there's a woman being chased. You see, she's running for her life so she can escape from being raped. Scarred in her heart now, so it's men she hates. Turn her back on the most high because she lost her faith. You see, everything happens for a reason. We're miserable now, but that'll only last for a season. Don't give up. It's meant for us to overcome this stormy weather. Cause in the end, life, it always gets better. Somewhere tonight, there's a man going to jail. He was caught selling drugs to escape his hell. His only crime was to feed his son and his daughter. But in his absence, 
His children were led astray like lambs to the slaughter. So now his son has to stand and be a man. I prepare for his death. You see, he's somewhere tonight breathing his last breath. Choking on his blood while praying to God before his death. His words is innocent and bold like somehow this prayer will save his soul. Never gone, never forgotten, a exquisite soul. Marcus Jamal Adams, rust in the arms of an angel at the foot of the rock of all ages. That was powerful right there, brother. Yeah, that was beautiful. And that was Thank his uh, his favorite, huh? Or is that what he wanted? He yeah, likes to read. Yeah, he, he, he used to love uh, listening to me recite that poem to him. So it was like, I guess it was natural for my brother, his dad, to ask me uh, if I can do that, honor him with that first, you know. And it was, it was my pleasure and my honor to be able to do that again for him. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. I see you have some other uh, some other pieces that you've uh, written, which uh, yes, yes, I do. Some more. The next one will be uh, the actual title of the album for him called No Closure, okay. and that's a uh, that's a primarily a rap song. Okay, uh, let me let's play that for the the listeners here. Let's see how that. Okay. Oh, that's out. Now, a man's body is found in a drainage culvert on the city's west side. But what happened next, involving two teenage girls, is even more disturbing. Eyewitness News reporter Alyssa Day spoke with the man's family, fighting to honor his memory. Family questioning everything. It's bad enough to steal from the living, but to steal from the dead, he's helpless. This is my cousin Marcus Adams. I'm pretty sure y'all have seen him everywhere. The girl, Bethany Martin, who stole his jewelry, he did not kill himself. Stop, everybody need to stop saying this. Stop spreading the rumors. He did not kill himself. Like Trust the work will rise in me. Never no closure for this situation After the murder of my nephew, my heart grew cold Tarred and became impatient Anger saw deadly weapons, charges I'm facing Betting and Martin violated my blood Yeah, that's me, that's hard to offer the station Vivid pictures of the dead, my head, my mind state is racing Your footsteps to death, yes, I'm retracing Young King, young warrior, Lil Jamon is for you, we moan You're never gone, never forgot Even the dead that can't be mistaken I look forward to the day I close my eyes Demise, and the dead be awakened For that I'm patiently waiting But for now I have a storm of hate and rage brewing in my chest And even with the death, a smile like yours can be replaced With a smile like no other Family members say 25-year-old Marcus Adams was well loved He enjoyed being outside and staying active Cause his attitude And how he'll be fun my soul died with my nephew Two days before you died, bless me with a smile I'm suicidal cause I left you And if you only knew You have an entire family ready to die Throw up off hands, sacrifice their life for you Somehow this can't be true The things they did to you Desecrated your body Now my soul is like a black a shade of blue Burst with a death photo The most high I can undo You promised to deliver us from evil But on July 24th with a hell with you but without a doubt, there's some mysterious work to do Like justice for Marcus, my freedom in your hands, I give it to you Cause you're the reason fallen angels with broken wings flew Praise to the Mashiach, cause in life and death, Marcus, praise to you what happened was insensitive and cruel But they will fight to honor the memory of the man they know And they will justice for That's all, that's all Because Shit ain't gonna end like that Here, we don't fear what is being said about him. It's bad enough to steal from the living, but to steal from the dead is helpless. Mm. Wow, that gave me chill bumps. <laughs> wow. Powerful, brother. That's powerful. Man. So that was no closure. Um, no closure. The second one, the third one would be suicidal state of mind. Suicide, suicidal state of mind. Okay, let's go ahead and play that one for the listeners. Hey, Mark. This is Lavelle. Hey, bro. Hey, 
When he died, I died. But yet I still breathe. There's not one day that you're gone. I don't mind. It's still so hard to believe. More than vengeance is a reckoning and just what we need. Cut to my nephew's chest, made his entire family leave. My life for his most high. Let's make a trade. Too much suffering, the images that's in my head. I pray that somehow prayers can resurrect the dead. If not, give them peace, truth, and justice instead. Like wine for blood and bread. I ask the blood of the covenant, it can't be misled. When a father moans his son, he has one foot in the grave. For the legacy you left is from the smiles you gave. Marcus Adams. July 27, can never forget a day truly devastating to the whole family. We lost a true one, big bro. You are forever in our hearts. We love you and we'll fight for you. We gon' get through all these lies and do what's right. Trapped in this suicidal mind state. Too much misery, tragedy. Yes, that's too much time. I'm ready to die and leave it all behind. Cause life's heavy. It's a blip, I feel this world ain't mine Oh, seven, two, four, the day die Lost more the skills, couldn't stop my eyes from crying It take more than skills, sheer will We're fighting, doing more than trying Nightmares, daydreams, vivid pictures That's blinding, horrifical memories And repeat like an hourglass rewinding Most times when you're alone Is when you're best on your own Beautiful heart stepped on, turned to stone Knocking on the door, but my love's gone Only pain lives here, that's why my heart groans Only pain lives here, that's why I'm clutching chrome Pain cuts so deep, I swear it's cutting bone On the outside looking in, but with my third eye vision Mentally, I'm not at home Life's a bitch, it's coming, and I got a home Said, whoa, if I die tonight, I'ma walk through hell slow Then pistol whip Satan for how he influenced your foes Hey, Jermone, this is Jasmine Just want to let you know that I miss you and I love you I miss talking to you I miss your laugh, your smile It's been getting really hard to Get used to the fact that you're gone And you're not gonna be here anymore I miss you, big brother. We're only one year apart, but we're so close. Wish I can talk to you. Wish I could hug you again, hear your voice. Miss you, Mark. Something about that song there, I asked them to do that at home. And on the last one where my niece is speaking, Jasmine, at the end of it, there is an actual live EVP. Uh, when you play it, you would hear right after she finished talking, it's my nephew Marcus's voice. He says, I am here. Oh. And we, we didn't realize that until until yesterday at the studio when we was finalizing the songs. They actually oh, wow. raised the volume of the background noise and we they picked that up. Oh my goodness. So that's his actual voice and I am here. Oh wow, yeah. We'll have to play that back and listen to that. Okay. Yeah, that's that was something else once we discovered that. The next one in line would be uh Don't Cry for Me. Don't cry for me. Okay. Let's pull that one up. Kind person and the oldest of six. His mother says he kept everyone laughing. He'll, he'll do anything. And they just automatically loved him because, like I said, his attitude was just, he kept a smile on his face. On Monday, Adam's family received devastating news. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says Adam's body was found in a drainage culvert in this far west San Antonio neighborhood. The medical examiner has ruled Adam's death a suicide. Hello, Marcus. This is Akai, and I miss you very much. 
and I don't know what to do. I just miss my brother. I don't know how to explain it, but I feel like in the inside, I'm dying. And oh yeah, I can't stop my eyes from crying. This is QB. Are you mad at me? Is that the reason you had to go? You don't want to play with me anymore? If you are sorry, I'm not mad. It's just I can't stop my eyes from crying. Please don't cry for me. Walk a million miles now just to make you see. Yes, manifest destiny. Believe, 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 believe. I know today's hard. Every day for sure might get harder. But Kai and QB remember me. Adam's going high speed, which means our shoulders were made to be broader. Please don't cry for me and become lambs led to the slaughter. People I thought were well, my friends set me up. Their actions made me a martyr. But I live through you. Chin up, smile for me. You're part of my legacy. Uh. Sorrow must go. Can't stop my eyes from crying. Can't stop my eyes from crying. Please don't cry for me. Walk a million miles now just to make you see. Yes, manifest destiny. Believe, 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 believe. I'm always watching you, so make me proud High mother and I father too Stop crying, Quentin I'm there for you Remember last night, your LOL That was me tickling you Remember one thing, we gon' stay strong As a family, we're gonna always get on And keep our heads up to the sky And wonder why the good always have to cry and die. Uh, that's the only way we gonna make it through, y'all. Through you, through you, Most High. Ah, uh, we thank you. All praises be. Please don't cry for me. Walk a million miles now just to make you see. Yes, manifest destiny. Believe, 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 believe. And of them stealing a necklace from the body. Oh, they're they're laughing about I can't believe you're doing this, words to that effect, treating it as a joke. The family says what happened was insensitive and cruel, but they will fight to honor the memory of the man they love. The detective already did his autopsy and they said it ain't no suicide. They need to take another autopsy. Marcus Adams was only 25 years old. If you've seen in the video, his hands were black. They were black to where he was fighting back for his life. His hand was, they had a sore on his hand. And his body was burned. They tortured his body. They cut his nipple off. When you do the stream and you gotta wait a second. 
But we got two Texas teens charged after they posted a Snapchat of themselves stealing a necklace from a dead black man's body. Hey, hate my face, they hate my hair. They hate the clothes that I wear. They hate our race, hands in the air. 50 gunshots, Bryce Field, that's in the air. They hate my face, they hate my hair. Even hate the clothes that I wear. They hate our race, hands in the air. 50 gunshots, Bryce Field, that's in the air. They killing me, I know you see how we live on our feet. Chosen people reduced to being exterminated just like fleas Systems unjust, lady liberty to understand our peace No one here our cries, but we make heaven move when we scream You can destroy my physical form, I visit you in your dreams Remember me like Malcolm, I survived by all means They never saw it coming, cause still I arrived in the scenes Time to tear down the veil, cause things just ain't what they see They wanna kill us all, when the writing's on the wall when the law's above the law And no one get involved When the law's above the law They hate my face, they hate my hair They hate the clothes that I wear They hate our race, hands in the air 50 gunshots, brush field, that's in the air They hate my face, they hate my hair Even hate the clothes that I wear they hate our race, hands in the air 50 gunshots, burst field, that's in the air They wanna kill us all, when the writing's on the wall When the law's above the law And no one get involved, when the law's above the law They hate my face, they hate my hair They hate the clothes that I wear they hate our race, hands in the air 50 gunshots, price field, that's in the air Went through the storm today Emerge clean Redemption day of the warrior, all praises to Elohim Time to tear down the cycle For the hate you gave, we spite you Shot, shot, bang, bang in the streets There's another kid from the crooked cop's rifle They wanna see us fall When the law's above the law When your balls against the wall And no one gets involved Takes the calls when the laws are but the law. Shot dead. Bang bang. Shot dead. Bang bang. Shot dead. Little black boy with one shot in his head. Ah. They hate my face. They hate my hair. They hate the clothes that I wear. They hate our race. Hands in the air. 50 gunshots, brush field, that's in the air They hate my face, they hate my hair Even hate the clothes that I wear They hate our race, hands in the air 50 gunshots, brush field, that's in the air What's good guys? This story is coming out of San Antonio, Texas Came out on July the 28th Teen arrested after Snapchat video shows her stealing necklace from dead man. This is a picture of 17-year-old Bethany Martin, who is charged in this case. A teenager who found a man's body under a drainage ditch was seen stealing his necklace in a video shared on Snapchat, according to the Bexar County Sheriff's Office. An arrest warrant affidavit states that Bethany Martin, 17, and a female friend, 16, discovered the man's body near the intersection of Sunday Song and Charismatic in southwest Bexar County on Monday morning. Investigators said the girls first called a friend who arrived and called authorities. All the music is just touching. Very, very touching. And I want to ask you if you could share the, with, the, with the listeners how they could reach out to you to get a copy of your music and just follow you. Can you give some of that information to the listeners? Yes, you can reach me at my email address is sincereadams832 at gmail.com. That's S-I-N-C-E-R-E-A-D-A-M-S 832 at gmail.com. I'm also uh, on Facebook under Yakub Adams, 
That's Y A A Q O V A D A M S. Uh, and you can look out for me also on YouTube. Uh, it would be Sincere the Dreamer, Sincere underscore D A underscore the Dreamer. So that's Sincere underscore D A underscore Dreamer. Got it. Um, is there anything else that you would like to, to share with the community regarding your nephew, Marcus Adams? Yes, I would like to. Uh, I would like to also share that uh, when it comes to my nephew's murder, there's more that's going to be uncovered. We're praying because every day we're searching for the truth. We're doing what the investigators, San Antonio's police department, isn't doing. And uh, so just be looking out for for that. Along with this. Uh, it's something that I has I haven't mentioned yet. I unfortunately went to jail two days after my nephew's murder, uh, even all the way up to the day I actually went to jail. We were all under the impression that it was a suicide. Around nine or ten o'clock that night, I was in Houston at the grocery store, and when I received a uh, phone call from my sister. She was hysterical. She actually sent me the video of the two girls, Bethany and the other girl, stealing from my nephew. So I shout out to San Antonio. Uh, not even five minutes of me getting there. It seemed like the way everything lined up, I was inside of a, I was in the back seat of a police car. Uh, my nephews stated that Caesar and a guy came there in a white color, colored car. They stated he also came around Caesar by himself on a scooter and also the two girls, Bethany and the other girl, uh, she, they were by my parents' house that Sunday and I believe that Monday as well. They found out Tuesday that he was dead. So they were at my mom's house. The two girls, Bethany Martin, she was at my mom's house kissing my mother and kissing my sister-in-law and my brother, giving their condolences. And the whole time they hadn't posted the video yet to try to make money off of it. So they were basically playing a role. But back to what happened with, with myself, uh, you, you, I guess they say, I understand what, 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 what older people mean when they say, be careful of what you ask for. Because while I was on my way to San Antonio, I spoke to one of my nephews and they said that there, were actually, there was actually a video of them stealing from me. We hadn't seen none of these things yet. And so for like two hours, it takes three hours from Houston to make it to San Antonio. So it seems like for almost two and a half hours, I was going backwards and forwards trying to get someone to send me the video because I didn't, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what to expect. I, did, I just wanted to see it. They sent it and I couldn't open it right off. But once I made it like not even five minutes away from my mother's house, I clicked play on the video. The video first started with my nephew in the background, I couldn't see. It was this brown image that, you know, when you, when you sent the video, it's like a frozen image until you click play. I seen like this blurred out brown image in the background and I seen the two girls standing up front, but I couldn't make out the image in the background. I clicked on it and when it focused in and I saw my nephew, I dropped, I just, I dropped the phone. Soon as I arrived, like not even two or three minutes later, I was pulling up by my mom's house. I'm walking up to the door. I see a white car park outside, like by the next door neighbor's house, the house right next to my mom's house. I, I didn't pay it no, any attention. I walk into the house. I kiss my mom. 
Then I go sit in the garage with the rest of my family where my, my, my nephew's father is and his mother and they're all talking. I go sit outside and then I realize that I needed to run to the store. So as soon as I sit down, I jump right back up to go to the gas station. While I'm walking to the car, one of my nephews, Joshua, who had came down after the news of my nephew, he wanted to come with me and I'm glad I told him no. I told him, just say, I'm just going to the store. As soon as I put the key, inside the ignition, that white car. And I had glanced at it again once I decided to leave to go to the store. No one seemed like they were in the, in the car. Put the key into a, to the ignition and the, the lights on this car came on. They pulled off slow. And just like described by my nephews earlier Sunday when Caesar and the other guy came, how they drove off after my nephew told them no, they, they stopped by the garage, my mom's garage, which was open and it was driving really slow, staring while they were pulling off. This car did the exact same thing. Me being not in the right frame of mind, I started to chase this car, screaming at him the entire time, what are you doing in front of my mom's house? is alleged that the car was shot up. Now I had a weapon, but I never pulled it. But then again, I'm going to say that the type of weapon that it was, I would have known if I had shot, and shot the weapon, because I mean, I'm gonna say it was a Tech-9, which there's, you're gonna always know when you shoot a weapon like that because it's going to have sparks and it's going to be extremely loud so they after it was over i went back to the house i was so out of it i went back to the house to my mom's house then the police ends up coming you know they put me in the back seat they checked my car for gunpowder they didn't find anything they did the prints on it couldn't find any gunpowder, checked the fish, bullet cartridges, shells, couldn't find anything. Well, there was nothing in there to find. They did, uh, they did, they put something on my hands to send off to see if I had gunpowder on my hands. And they also took my weapon to see if it was discharged. They, after they did that, they told me that I was going to go to a police lineup. Now a police lineup, in the case, a line is more than one person. In order to create a line, you need more than one person to create a line. The police lineup they took me was not at a police station, but across the street from my mom's subdivision at the gas station. They brought me there, took me out, stood me outside the car where I guess the other person who was inside the, another police car, the person who was in a vehicle that I chased, I guess, uh, identified me as the person who was driving uh, a, a serial Mercedes Benz brandishing a weapon. And I was taken to jail from there. I was given a $60,000 bond, uh, which cost me 6,000. The girls were, who desecrated my nephew's body was given a $2,000 bond, which cost them 200 to get out. Uh, and so it, it, it's 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 a lot that goes on with this, and we're trying to understand why it wasn't on the news, because what happened with me was a direct result of what happened to my nephew. And I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna always say it because I know it to be true now. A person could be temporarily out of their mind. I never understood it at first. And so watching a nephew that I knew before and loved before he knew and loved himself massacred the way he was and there was actual video. I didn't understand, I never understood before that moment how a person could be on the other side of their mind. But I understand that now. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying that to say that Justice for my nephew is also justice for me. 
because a perceived threat is just as deadly as an actual threat. There's no, there's no differentiating the emotions from a perceived threat versus an actual threat because the emotions are the same. This album that I'm putting out for my nephew it's priced at twelve ninety nine. It's gonna be on all streaming platforms. Uh, waiting for it to be actually released. I tried to sit out to have it released for his birthday, which was yesterday, October thirteenth. Um, so hopefully it's already uploaded. Hopefully it kicks in to where it can be purchased soon. This money is going to go towards a legal defense for my nephew and also for myself. So there's multiple goals I'm trying to reach with this LP, this album that I'm doing for my nephew. And I believe through the grace of the most high, because it's already been written, that our justice is already given to us. And I'm having faith that it will be delivered and that everything I'm setting forward to do with this album for my nephew is to bring awareness and honor to his name and justice for the both of us. But I'm gonna say again, if justice can be dealt in pairs and only one of us can get justice, I would rather it be my nephew because I'm a grown man and we, you know, and, and I, 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 my nephew deserves this. Wow, that was beautiful. Um, I definitely will say, you know, sending love and healing for your family. May the spirit of Marcus Adams feel the power of recompense through the family's attempt to shed light and search for this justice. And may the most high show you all favor. I thank you again for taking the time and the space to share this information with us. And uh, this podcast is a dedication, a tribute to your nephew, Marcus Adams. And uh, we also pray that the Most High shows favor to you as well, my brother. So Thank you. this ends this podcast, uh, Right in the Phoenix podcast is a space to express your truth. Much love. Much love.